Good day everyone. I'm Michael. And I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video, you learn how the following. First is to create a Xamarin Forms grid in XAML. Second is to specify columns and rows for the grid. And third is span content across multiple columns or multiple rows in the grid. What is grid? The grid is a layout that organizes its children into rows and columns, which can have proportional or absolute sizes. By default, a grid contains one row and one column. In addition, a grid can be used as a parent layout that contains other child layouts. The grid layout should not be confused with tables and is not intended to present tabular data. Unlike HTML tables, a grid is intended for laying out content. For displaying tabular data, consider using a list view, collection view, or table view. The real-world examples of grid are photo albums, keypads, calculator, metro-style design that use in Windows 8, calendars, and many more. The following are some of the properties of grid element. Column of type integer, which is an attached property that indicates the column alignment of a view within a parent grid. The default value of this property is zero. A validation callback ensures that when the property is set, its value is greater than or equal to zero. Column definitions of type column definition collection is a list of column definition objects that define the width of the grid columns. Column spacing of type double indicates the distance between grid columns. The default value of this property is six device independent units. Column span of type integer, which is an attached property that indicates the total number of columns that a view spans within a parent grid. The default value of this property is one. A validation callback ensures that when the property is set, its value is greater than or equal to one. Row of type integer, which is an attached property that indicates the row alignment of a view within a parent grid. The default value of this property is zero. A validation callback ensures that when the property is set, its value is greater than or equal to zero. Row definitions of type row definition collection is a list of row definition objects that define the height of the grid rows. Row spacing of type double indicates the distance between grid rows. The default value of this property is six device independent units. Row span of type integer, which is an attached property that indicates the total number of rows that a view spans within a parent grid. The default value of this property is one. A validation callback ensures that when the property is set, its value is greater than or equal to one. These properties are backed by bindable property objects, which means that the properties can be targets of data bindings and styled. For this video lesson, I will demonstrate how to add a grid element, add rows and columns, and modify its property. So now let's go and open the Visual Studio. Let's create a new project and name it Grid. Now go to the XAML file of our main page and delete its initial content. What I want to do is to display a grid with four rows and three columns on it. So let's input the grid tag. Then add a background color and set it value to green. To add rows and columns to the grid. We need to add first the content or the child element of our grid. For this demonstration, I will be using a label. Since our objective is to create a 4 by 3 grid, this means it has 12 cells. So we needed to add also 12 labels. 
Now let's add a label with a background color of white. Next is to set this label on what column and row it will be placed. Now let's make label 1 be at row 1, column 1. Let's type in grid.row and set its value to 0. Then grid.column and set its value to 0. Remember, in programming, counting always starts at 0. That's why this row 0 and column 0 is position at row 1 and column 1 of the grid. Just a qu quick reminder. This grid.row and grid.column property is not a property of the label, it is the property of the grid. Though we input them inside the label. This property is called attached bindable property. The attached bindable properties enable an object to assign a value for a property that its class doesn't define. So, the child element, like these labels, can use attached properties to inform their parent element, in this case, the grid element, of how are to be presented in the user interface. The grid element allows the row and column of a child to be specified by setting the grid.row and grid.column attached properties. These properties are attached properties because they are set on elements that are children, like the label, rather than on the grid itself. We need 12 cells, so copy this label, and paste it 11 times. Then let's change the text property of each label. Then set their position on the grid. Now, let's run the app. This is our grid element with four rows and three columns. And each label position according to designated row and column. If you will notice, the size of each cell has the same height and width. By default, the rows equally divided the space of the screen same with the column. To be able to modify it, we need to add a property element. Unlike the attached bindable properties, property element defines inside the grid element. We are using an HTML element to set the properties of the grid. So for the grid element, these are row definition and column definition. These properties are collection types, it's a complex type. That's why we cannot set these definitions like an attribute like what we did with the background color. Or an attached property like the grid.row and grid.column. Inside these tags, we will add multiple elements to set the size of the rows of the grid. Let us add first the row definition. To do this, we add the parent tag. Inside these tags, we can add four row definitions with a different height value. As you can see, I didn't specify the row number I intend to modify. What happens is that it refers to the position or the arrangement of our row definition. 
meaning this first row definition will target the first row of our grid element. And the second row definition will target the second row of our grid element. And so and so forth. Now let's modify the column width of the grid. The syntax is the same as the row definition. In this case, the tag we will be using is column definition. So let's add it. That's how, how we modify its height and width. Aside from using a number as the value for our property to height and width. We could also use auto and star. The one we've been using so far is called absolute. Absolute is the row height or column width is a value in device independent units. Auto is the row height or column width is autosized based on the cell contents. And star is leftover row height or column width is allocated proportionally. It is a number followed by star in XAML. Just a quick reminder. Try to ensure that as few rows and columns as possible are set to auto size. Each auto sized row or column will cause the layout engine to perform additional layout calculations. Instead, use fixed size rows and columns if possible. Now let's change the height and width property using star and auto. As you can see I set the first row to auto. So this row will fit base on its content. On the third row, we set its height to star. This will automatically fill what's is left on the screen. Let's change also the width of the columns. For the grid columns, we set its second row to blank. This is the same as using a star. It will automatically fill what is left. In the third column, the value is 2 star. Assuming there are 300 units left. And it will be divided into two columns. Column 3 with a size of 2 star will get 200 hundred units, while column 2 with a width value of blank or a star will get only 100 units. You can also use 3 star, 4 start etc. That's why the width columns 3 is twice compared to the width of column 2. Now, what if we want particular cells to consume 2 rows or 2 columns or more? To answer that, we will be using another bindable property of the grid called row span and column span. Let's make label 4 to consume 3 columns. To do that, we must remove or comment out labels 8 and 12 first. Then add column span property to label 4. Type column span and sets its value to 3. This means that this cell will consume 3 columns of the grid. As you can see, label 4 consumes 3 columns of the grid. Let us also use row span property. Let's add row span property to label 9. And I want this row to consume three rows. If you look at the emulator, the only things that change are the spacing between label 9, label 10, and label 11. This is because label 10 and label 11 still exist in our XAML code. Let's just delete or comment on our labels 10 and 11. There you have it. Last one thing, notice the space between each cell. 
We can modify the spacing by using the property of the grid call row spacing in column spacing. Let's set its value in the grid tag. As you can see, I already changed the spacing, and yet nothing's changed on the screen of the emulator. It could be that changing the spacing is not supported on Hot Reload. We just need to reload the app. Now this is our row spacing with unit of 1. And this is our column spacing with unit of 3. That's how we create a grid, specify columns and rows, span content across multiple columns or multiple rows in the grid, and change the spacing of the rows and columns. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone!